Bienvenue uh, à la... Uh, I don't know what show is, actually. Just a show. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, à la show GCN en anglais. Oui, oui. Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we're looking at the cheapest and most expensive bikes at the Tour de France. But that's not all. We've also got loads of hot tech from the biggest bike race in the world. And it's Eurobike this week as well. It's all happening. Alex is there on the hunt for hot tech. And of course, we've got comments of the week and the bike vault. Let's get to it. So the Tour de France riders use the best bikes available, but they do have to be commercially available, although sometimes they are limited by their team sponsors. And some of them are off the peg, whereas some teams will use a frame set and get totally different components to what you can buy in the shop. Yeah, and we've looked at sort of all the team bikes there are out there, and we've totted up what they cost and what all the different parts will cost on them and we've tried to work out what we believe to be the most expensive and cheapest bikes at this year's race. But if we have missed something, which there is a chance we have, we're not perfect. There is. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, then let us know in the comments. Um, so let's get on with what we think is the cheapest. Yes. So done some maths and I think a very strong contender is the bike of Team Uno X with the Dare VRSU. Now you can get this frame set for just 2,940 euros. I, I, well, we, we need to just caveat all of what we're about to say in this discussion. Because when we say it's, just... It's still a lot of money. In relative terms for a Tour de France bike, that is... Cheap. That is, yeah, a yeah. Low, low cost. It does cost more than most people's whole bike, but yeah. yes, <laughs> brace yourselves. Um, it's yeah, cycling. it is good. I think w w we need to caveat that though. Again, so the, yeah. So the first thing is <laughs> lots of caveats. Um, is that we have actually spotted them riding an unreleased frame yes. set, which is in our hot tech video. Um, Lloydie saw them riding the massive, huge, deep head tube. Look quite nice. New version of that bike. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's very aero. So there's that, although some of the older bikes have been seen at the race. And although that frame, that's probably the cheapest frame set you could get, once we totted it up and put all the components on and built it up to the spec that they use, which includes using things like ceramic speed bottom brackets and oversized pulley wheel systems. And, it's quite eye-watering, so actually, how, it, it, the, how the price jumps up. Yeah, you then get to over 11 grand for that bike. So... Definitely not the cheapest. Not the cheapest, no. So what's a contender then for like the actual cheapest total so, bike? Might not surprise you. The Cathalons AG2R. You say this better than me. Do it in your French accent. AG2R Le exactly, Mondial. Exactly, yeah. With the Van Rysel RCR. Now you can get these for £9,000 here in the UK. And that is full race spec. I think it's AG2R. AG2R. Yeah, sorry. I'm just getting my pronunciation right. AG2R. Do you speak French? Oui, je parle un peu. Do you actually? Right. I don't know if you're speaking French or just... Je peux parler français. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> anyway, you can get the Van Rysel RCR for just £9,000 here in the UK and that comes with, like, race spec. Yeah, Like, that, it, like it, it is at the Tour de France. Yeah, I mean, that roughly translates into the, the, the same for sort of euros and dollars. It's around that ballpark, but... Yeah, so you've got the it is it is the bike that they ride. Mm. Like it's got the same DT Swiss Hadron wheels, GP five thousand tires, power the same meter. Pa yeah, Dura mm. Ace throughout power meter. Um, 3D even printed saddles. The, yeah, the three D printed physique yeah. saddles on there, which is what the team uses. The only things it doesn't have are Wahoo uh, bolt head unit, like two hundred and fifty yeah. quid for that, and then the pedals, which are they use Look Keo carbons with. Um, ceramic bearings. That's another 310 cool. euros if you get them off Look's website direct. Mm. Um, so yeah, but that is that is a contender. Yeah, that's that's because that yeah. is complete spec mm. for less than 10 grand. But you've you've had your little investigator cap on, yeah. looking at the sales. Go on, we've tell us, a, Ollie. Well, a bit of a curveball. It so previously, the, the when you went on the Canyon website. Canyon's like Aeroad CFR, which is ridden by Movistar and Alpecinda Koenig, that was m just a bit more than the, the, the Cathlon bike. So I think it was around 9,000 
250 something like that was the, the price of that. And that too is like a, a race spec bike off the peg, right? However, they've got a sale on. They have. Right, so you can actually get that bike right now um, for about eight oh, £8,099 in the UK. So again, it's, it's roughly comparable in, in sort of dollars and euros. One little caveat though, is the wheels are a bit different. So, like Alpes and Koenig use um, Jura Ace wheels. Mm -hmm. Like the one there that's in the Alpes in colours is has got DT Swiss ARC one one hundred wheels, but they actually have a higher retail price than the Jura Ace wheels. So they're like slightly higher spec with ceramic bearings and stuff. So yeah, yeah. So so are we calling that one the officially the cheapest one. Is that taking the crown? With, with, a, with an asterisk, yes. yes. I think that that is currently, yeah, okay. probably where, where we're sort of at, yeah. I guess we should now so move to the other end of the spectrum. The most expensive. Um, Gets juicy now. Yeah, so I think the first thing we should probably look at is Pogacar's bike. That has to be pretty expensive. Yeah, I think people would be looking at that. Yeah. So Because the thing is with Pogacar's bike is it's the most, it's like the least off the peg bike, I think, at the race. So you can't buy a bike that's like his spec from Colnago, and that's because he uses loads of exotic components on it. So we've seen this, you know, uh, we've done, a, uh, Dan did a pro bike over on it, and he's got things like, you know, absolute black brake pads in there, which cost an absolute fortune, and uh, loads of carbon tie products, the rotors, the, the disc brake, um, uh, the discs. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that just for his bike, or is that throughout the team? Uh, a lot of the team use those things as well, but... Um, it's like just a lot of it specifically on, on, on his. his. There's lots of little special, fancy bits, yeah. yeah. Special um, to just to get the little marginal weight weenie yeah, bit yeah. to keep the weight down, mm. really. Um, so once you sort of add all that up, um, it gets quite expensive. So the, the Colnago V4 RS frame set, five grand, right? Yeah. And then when we look at the other bit, so he uses a fancy NV SES AR handlebar. That's nearly, nearly a thousand pounds for that. We put it in the show like months ago when it was launched, and it's eye-wateringly expensive. Then you've got you know uh, full Jura Ace group set. We've got the um, power meter on there as well, so that takes Jura Ace over four thousand pounds. His Envy wheels, they're mm. you know two thousand two hundred and forty-nine pounds. Um, then all the carbon tie components, you know rotors, chain rings. His, his tires are you know you're looking about one hundred and sixty quid for the tires. Um, pedals and saddle and all that added on, you know, plus he's got like ceramic speed everything on there. Everything. I mean, that adds up. So you, you're basically getting, you're getting on for around 13, 14,000 pounds. So, you know, 15,000 dollars. That's a lot of money. Dollars. That's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, you know, maybe like, what's that, you know, 15, 16,000 euros. It's a lot. But I mean, if it's going to help you win the Tour de France, yeah. is he going to win them? Also, when you think of expensive bikes at the Tour de France, you automatically think of the Pinarello Dogma F. Has to be pretty high up there. Yeah. And that comes in at the price of 13 grand, but that comes kind of off the shelf how it is. The only kind of extras that I think they had is like the, the fancy 3D printed mounts at the front and the K -edge cane ch catchers as well. <laughs> cane catcher. Chain catchers, yeah, yeah. a bit of a mouthful. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's quite cool those chain catches because they put the magnet on the end of it as well for the power meter, for the Jura Ace power meter. It's quite a cool way of doing it. Mm. But yeah, so once you add those up, you, you, you know, you're getting 13, maybe 13 push, pushing on 13 and a half. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, well, then when you add a computer and pedals on again, yeah, you're getting up to 14. But still, I think, I think there's things that blow that out of the water. Yeah. Na but it's another Pinarello. Is it? Yeah. So this. The bike that I think is the most expensive bike at the Tour is the Pinarello Belide F, which is their time trial bike. So for those who've, who are unfamiliar, because a lot of people who are new to cycling come in uh, for the Tour, um, the time trial bikes are the bike, special bikes that are ridden in the time trials by the team. They're not ridden in the bunch uh, race stages where they ride in a peloton, um, exclusively in the time trials. And Made to of, go as fast as possible. Yeah, of which stage seven um, is the first time trial of this year's race. How much are you looking forward to that? How much are you going to geek out oh, watching I love, that? I love time trials. <laughs> um, but like, I've already been doing my calculations. And, oh yeah. And looking at the course, yeah, in my in my spare time. 
what's, what kind of calculations you've been doing. I'll tell you later. Anyway, <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> so the crazy thing for that is the frame set alone, 12 grand. That's just for the frame. Just the frame. Can't even ride it because it's just the frame. Yeah, 12 grand just for the frame. But they use amazing, like, fancy custom aero extensions at the front. They are very nice looking. Yeah, and these are um, 3D printed out of Scalmalloy. And they're tailored and made individual for every single rider's, like, arm length. So they're perfectly sort of shaped and stuff. Really aerodynamic, really, really cool. It's like sort of F1 tech, isn't it? Mm. But that, getting those done, that bumps the price up and to 30 grand if you want to buy just one for the handlebars well 30 grand for the frame set and with the fancy integrated but you still haven't got wheels handlebar. on that no you still haven't got gears no, no. brakes no um, so cool. we've, we've added up the price of the other stuff so on top of that you'd obviously need the group set and power meter so that would come to around £4,200 for they, Dior Ace yeah, yeah for Dior Ace but they are saving £200 because they haven't got a front mech because they're didn't. using the classified internal hub oh but that adds a grand on that, yeah that adds a grand on so we're not really saving <laughs> yeah. any money there yeah so uh, for those who are unfamiliar it basically takes that front mech and puts it in the rear hub of the wheel um, to make it a bit more aerodynamic by removing that front mech, it's all marginal gains. Um, and based on like what we've seen them using this season, they've been using Princeton wheels in time trials. So if you add on their Blur 633 V3 disc wheel at the back, that's about $2,950, about 2,500 quid. Um, and then they use this uh, the front tri spoke from Princeton, which is two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, so that's about five thousand eight hundred dollars total for the wheels. It's a lot, um, and that that's about four thousand six hundred quid. But then you've also got tires, which is probably nearly two hundred quid. Yeah, the special fancy, fast fancy tires. TT tires yeah. from Continental. And you've got pedals, two hundred fifty quid head unit, two hundred fifty quid. Then wax chain. Well, we'll throw that in for free. Shall we? Yeah. Okay, Wax fine. it themselves, yeah. Um, <laughs> then they use, they've been using DigiRit carbon chain rings, single chain rings. Yeah. Big, massive dinner plates. Like, we saw like Tobias Foss with a 68 tooth That's on. That's like a Conor Dunn dinner plate. Yeah, massive dinner plate. Uh, Alan Partridge's big plate that he takes the buffet. Um, <laughs> like, so, yeah, oh. they're, they're, like, they're $330 for one of those, or 300 quid. Um, and then a Physique Mystica TT saddle with carbon rails is 234 quid. Have you been keeping track of all this, this adding up? Because I am the, lost. The, the approximate cost for all of that is about £42,000, which is, you know, what? $45,000, $46,000, something like that. You could buy a lot. You could buy a lot of stuff for that. And when you think that each rider on the team, and there's 30 riders on the team, will have at least two of those, probably three. Yeah. Because they'll have a training one, and yeah. then they'll have two in the service course yeah. for the race. And then they'll take some spare frame sets maybe to the race. That's a lot of that money. That is a lot. That is a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. And that's just TT bikes. Yeah. Mm. That, that is a crazy amount. But then you have to remind yourself that this is like the F1 of bike racing. This is like the best of the best. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't um, get much better. No. So let us know what, what you think of that. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you could pick just one Tour de France bike to be... Yeah, to have for yourself um, let us know what you'd pick and also I say if we've missed anything that's super expensive um, let us know one thing that does come close is that new Villier TT mm. bike that they just launched which Stefan Kung um, will be riding at, F at FDJ and um, but that is still not quite as expensive as the Belide I don't think anything can uh, quite top that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Factor will be watching they'll be like challenge accepted <laughs> <laughs> now time for hot and spicy tech. Uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. Uh, before we crack on though, uh, Dan has got some hot tech for us from the big French bike ride. Over to Dan. So I'm here with Marlos, who is Head of Operations at Team DSM Fermanic Post NL, uh, to talk about your Volvo team cars for the tour this year, yes. because you've gone fully electric. What was the process behind this? I'd imagine it's a few years in the making. Yep. Well, we always had the idea to, to make some steps in our uh, environmental uh, approach. Um, and last year we got the opportunity to test uh, one of these cars in, uh, in the Dauphiné. 
Um, one DS card we used in that race. Then we brought the same car to the, to the Swiss to see how that would work. And we were actually uh, quite pleasantly surprised and uh, decided to take two DS cars into the Tour de France last year. Yeah. And so that was the start this everything. year, a complete fleet of electric cars? Uh, almost completely. We have half of our cars are uh, EVs yeah. and they're all the coach cars, the DS cars. Okay. Yeah. And what were the stumbling blocks the last few years? Because, I mean, obviously they're, they're long stages, plus you yeah. have to get to the start yeah. and to the hotel at the finish. Yeah. Have, you, have you come across any points where you thought this is not going to work? Yeah, I think we... we, we, we for so actually more problems than they were in reality were. So yeah. it was more the mindset of people and how relaxed we are working with uh, with these cars, and that we learned already in the first races that we that we could pretty be pretty relaxed uh, about using those cars. There's a difference in countries. Some countries have like an older gas stations, also electric points. Mm. Uh, other countries you have to search a bit more, like on, on industrial areas, etc. But once you get to know where to look for, that's actually pretty okay. Just you need to just have a little bit more time on your day, but you can sit there, work on your computer, and 15 minutes yeah. later you're on the road again. Turn your phone off, have a complete relax. That's also possible. How yeah. much of this is planned ahead of the race in terms of, of where you look for charges and where you need to be to charge the cars? Uh, at the beginning we did it a lot. We had, uh, before we went to the Dauphiné, we had one or two of these cars built in with like a, a system that could monitor exactly how the range was, because we put a roof rack on the, mm. on the car, the bikes on the car, that's different than what, what's normally in, yeah. the, in the folder of Volvo, of course. Um, so we had some, some data that helped us to predict how we would come from, let's say, hotel to start, to the finish, back to the hotel, possible or not. And with that data, we also uh, planned already, we can charge here on the highway, you can charge there on a good spot or at the hotel, which mm. is nice because then you start in the morning with 100%. Yep. Um, so we planned, at first we planned quite a lot, but as we got, got along, I think for this race we're not planning actually so much. Okay. We know up front with, with some specifics from the, from the stages uh, where we have to take care of. And that's not the mountain stages, it's actually the other stages that yeah. are more challenging. And then those days we pay a little bit more extra attention, make sure we have somebody who can, uh, who can drive mm. uh, past a, a charging station. Yeah, that's, that's how we go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question that I think a lot of the public might be interested in. What's the difference in range on a Volvo EV when you've got a lot of bikes on the roof versus when you don't? Yeah, I think the difference is, uh, I think from the, um, it should be around 400, 450, and I think we are maybe 100 kilometers less. Okay, easy. so it's fairly significant. Yeah, yeah, and then the faster you go on a highway, the, the more the difference gets. Yeah. So what we try to also is to put the DS cars behind the bus, and then draft a little bit, that also, that also helps a bit. Yeah. Uh, but if you, get, if you go 140 on the highway with, roofs, with the bikes on the roofs, then it goes yeah. quickly. So when there's crosswinds, you're taking up the whole highway yeah. Yeah, spread across like the road. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's good to see more teams choosing yeah. electric vehicles, and that's exactly what Team DSM are doing. Uh, I've managed to grab Pete Royackers. We've just remembered that we used to race with or against, well, yeah. against each other, I guess, yeah. back in the day. Uh, he is the R&D expert, Team DSM Thermonic, but likes to say he's project manager of... of material development. Material yeah, development. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not as smart as uh, the engineers uh, and our partners are our own in-house engineers. So uh, I just try to connect all those people together with the good ideas coming from the riders. Well, connecting the dots, that's an important thing to that's do. That's my job. Uh, what are we looking at today? Yeah, I think already for, uh, I think we are well known for the protective wear that we make, yeah. that we try to create. And then and two years ago already, we had the first successful sprint suits. So now you need so to do special uh, jersey and, and skin suit yep. material that yep. protects yep. in the event of a crash. Yeah, when you do uh, uh, sliding over the asphalt, the, the, the the abrasions should be uh, yeah, or zero, depends a little bit on the speed and the impact that you get. But uh, it's certified in, uh, in the German test center TUV. Yeah. And uh, you could be, you could wear it also as the lightest uh, class of motorbike. Uh, oh okay. really? Yeah, 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 that's the same. Oh, that's uh, the level, the level of protection. Of protection. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But in, in the end, it's still riders and riders want to have everything on point and. We're now uh, extending the range, the collection. So we started with a uh, with a bibs and a sprint suit, mm. and from there we derived a, a normal jersey. And uh, in the end, now we uh, this coming weeks we hope to see the the summer sprint jersey and the normal summer jersey more. So with the uh, with the normal suit, we also have the back panel fully in a protective armored wear. But now we have uh, just. So how does it how does it work? What's the construction of the jersey? How does it... um, we combine. Uh, 
It, it starts with fibers. From fibers, we make threads. Mm -hmm. We make those threads in, a, in an order with, with, the, with, the, with the known ones as uh, polyester and elastan. But in that, we mix layers of uh, a Dyneema. And by doing that, uh, it gets the strength that it should have and also the, the, um, the density that it should have. Mm -hmm. um, Dyneema is a material that is in its, in its weight is 15 times stronger than steel. Um, so when you combine three threads instead of three threads of polyester in the weaving, then you get a, a much stronger uh, fabric. Uh, whilst yeah. I've got you, uh, I'm not sure if I was supposed to be poking around in this bag, but I yeah, did. you can. Uh, does um, again. Yeah, we have no secret. So we have the time trial helmet here of Niels Eikhoff. Can you explain that? I presume this is the race radio that's kind of not integrated, but always strapped onto the Yeah, it's more or less integrated in the TT helmet because we don't take it out. Yep. So for that part, it is integrated. We have the, the, it's with straps. You have a microphone going to the front where we can, uh, uh, a Bluetooth uh, button can be attached or um, paired mm. with it. So he can, could also speak back, but in a time trial, we only do that for the team time trial, like in Paris Nice. And Niels had it on his bike, an extra button. Keeps in position, stays in position, mm. can just speak to all the other eyes, doesn't have to shout. Uh, so that, that, that was a nice thing. And then you have two antennas to signal towards yeah, each other and to the car. So that was for the team time trial, but now, yeah, this is just for receiving from the car. Does this mean that you need to have a fake radio down the chest for aerodynamics? I would prefer a walkie-talkie. <laughs> yes, but you that's just not speak allowed. into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. a dummy walkie-talkie from a movie set maybe, but no, no. Yeah, we, the, the whole idea in the beginning was uh, uh, weight and uh, broken vertebrae and ribs. Yeah, yeah. That was the idea. Um, and, and I think we managed with that. Yeah. Only, uh, yeah, when it's an aerodynamic benefit to put the radio here, then we have a bit of a loss, but still we go forward with uh, non-breaking vertebrae and ribs. Yeah, uh, well, I think that's probably part. the best direction to go in. You choose your strategy, yeah. we care for the riders, and we see where it gets us. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you Thank very you. much, Pete. Have and I will tour. see you again at the next race, I guess. Yeah, have a good yeah. tour yourself. Thanks. Thanks. It's good to see them using electric cars, isn't it? Really good. It's yeah. really cool. Right. What have you got next, Chris? Well, we actually have a competition, very exciting, for your chance to win a free Switch kit. And you might have seen over on the GCN channel where me, Connor and Hank went on a bit of an adventure with these Switch kits. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But this competition will run until the 12th of July. And that's all you have to do is click on the link in the description and it'll take you to a page where you have to answer one simple question, put in your details, and then we will reveal the winners, and there is three chances to win, yeah. so get entering. And you'll be contacted via email, not in the comments section, by a Russian hacker underneath this video, <laughs> so you know. There you go. Uh, right, something else we need to talk about. We need to talk about. Big tech story this week. Probably the biggest this year. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Gronewagen's glasses. What it do you think of them? wore these on stage three, and well, the internet went wild. It did. Loads of sort of Batman memes with the, no, the <laughs> nose piece. I, I've never seen anything like this before. It's and a no from me. It, it is definitely a no. It's not. It's not a good look. And you know, sometimes you're like, why? Like, is it? Is it for error? Is it like for sunblock or well, what? Apparently, it was for error. Yeah, but is it? It's just like the same shape as your nose. So but then he had a helmet with like big vents in it. You're like, well, why not just wear like the visor helmet thing? Yeah. You tell him, Molly. I don't really. I... Anyway, the UCI intervened. Halfway through the race. And banned it halfway through the race. Took us to any car where them. Nothing gets past the UCI. Couldn't even finish the race in them. I don't understand how they're allowed, but the Oakley Cato is not allowed. Yeah. It's like, mm. anyway, the UCI, they were having none of it. They said he can't wear them. Um... I actually think it was like, you know, because so many people were talking about it, the UCI just panicked and were like, oh my God, we need to stop this. Uh, they look ridiculous. All right, but, but okay, question time. Would you rather wear Dylan Gronewagen's sunglasses on yes. your next Sunday club run or the Yumbo Visma TT helmet or Visma Lisa bike TT helmet? The, I'm going to say the glasses, you know. You're going to go glasses? You can't turn up to a club run in a helmet like that. Okay, I think if I had to wear one, I would wear the glasses as well. What about, okay, here we go. <laughs> how many, if, if they do save you watts, how many watts do they have to save you? To wear them. To wear them.
15. 15 watts? Yeah. If they saved you 15 watts, yeah, you'd yeah, wear them? Yeah. 15 watts, that's quite a lot. I don't know what I would, I don't know. It is a lot, it is like, a lot. Right, Ollie, imagine you in that time trial. Tell my time trial that you're doing whenever. Yeah. And 15 watts, that's a lot. It is a lot, it's yeah. A lot. It is a lot. You, you take that any day of the week. I think, I think for 15 watts, I'd probably wear them as well. Exactly. Oh, God. That says a lot about us, doesn't I hate, it? I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on from that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they say 15 watts, though, so I think we're safe. It's probably like three. Yeah, if right. That. I don't even think it's like that. No, I think it'd be that. Two and a half? I don't, I mean... I, one and a half? Maybe one, I don't know. No, surely. You wouldn't put yourself... But to be fair, if they did save that much watch, surely everybody else in the team would wear them. For one what? I wouldn't save them. For, I don't no, not for one what, but if they did make it. I don't make think a they, I don't think the saving is massive. I don't think it can be. Anyway, uh, new bike alert. The worst kept secret. It launched um, at the start of the tour. The new uh, Trek Madon. So yeah, it's broken cover. Uh, a lot of you will have seen the information about the bike now. So they basically blended the Amonda and the Madon into an all rounder, um, which. It's kind of cool because, like, yeah, I think the all-round bike makes a lot more sense from the perspective of the consumer because most people want an all-rounder yeah. and they're not going to buy two ten grand super bikes. No, like this, one's a climbing one and one's a well, narrow yeah, one. Yeah, and um, most people like us don't need two two bikes because yeah, they yeah, just want one good do-it-all bike. Um, however, when and I'd like that they did produce a white paper with with it that's on their website, you can see it's got all the information on it. And I, I like that. I like that transparency when they, when they show all the, the data and the numbers and stuff. Um, and I'm inclined to actually, you know, believe that as being, as being quite genuine mm, numbers. Yeah. Because when you actually look into it, the new bike isn't, well, really faster than the old one. Um, so when, when I looked at the numbers on the white paper, it's 0.1 of a watt faster than the old Madone. But point one, <laughs> yeah. But that is when it's using the new aero bottles, and the old Madone is using normal round bottles. Yeah. So if you put the aero, if you put round bottles on the new one, it, you assume that what that's saying is it would be slower than the other one. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. Yeah. But you can you can fit normal bottles into those. Oh yeah, yeah you can put yeah. your, you can change the bottle cages out. Yeah, it's mm. fine. Um, but yeah, there you go. Interesting. Um, this week is also uh, Eurobike, as we mentioned at the top of the show. Alex is over at Eurobike looking for all, like, all hot tech stuff. So um, if you don't subscribe, then... You're not going to see it. Yeah. So you know, we, we need your support more than ever, especially now we've become independent again. So uh, if you want to see all the hot tech from Eurobike, make sure you subscribe because there's going to be loads of videos coming out over that um, over the next yeah, few days. Yeah, very excited to see what's, what Alex has been finding out there. It's time now for comments of the week. Do you not do a jingle anymore? No. No, okay. no. Hits. I can't, no. What? No, no hits with the comments. Oh, okay. Yes, I'll do my jingle then. Or something. Um, so first one, I wish you two did the bike fold every week. Not me and you, only me and Connor. We absolutely smashed the bike fold, although we did super nice pretty much Well, that's why week. everyone wants you to do it every yeah, week. Yeah, true. But we have rules to uphold. Yeah. Well, and they were very, 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 very nice bikes, so... Right, Stu from Oz99 says, I have to say, as a tall cyclist, it's always nice to see another rider who understands the trials of being too big for many bikes. Connor certainly does yeah. that. Mm, and that Tannosaurus bike was, it was pretty cool to see in the flesh, and Connor did, I have to say, geek over it, which I haven't seen before. But he, I, he, he was, I, I, I like how excited he got about honestly, it. Honestly, he would not shut up about it all morning until he saw <laughs> that bike, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, under the Tour de France hot tech from Andrew Jones 1720, share with your friends if you've got any. I feel personally attacked. I'm your friend, Andrew Jones. Share it with me. That doesn't sound very genuine. I'm everyone's friend. I'm your friend. Andrew Jones definitely has <laughs> friends. Yeah, anyway, I'm sure he does. Um, 888 John Mack says, watching Ollie properly geek out, priceless lol. 
Is that a good it is bike? cool seeing the. Uh, it is cool seeing all the all the bikes and stuff. And when mm. you spot things that you've not seen before, or like Ooh. little secret things that teams are using to try and get an advantage, yeah. so I always think it's cool. You love for that. Mm. And then uh, the pro bike, the Tally Pikachu pro bike. Great to see Dan doing this type of vid- these type of videos again. Looking forward to seeing many more. Yeah. It is nice to have Dan back. It is good. Yeah, yeah. lots of cool stuff on po- Pog's bike as well. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's now time for the Bike Vault where you send in your pride and joy and we vote if they're nice or super nice. There is quite some strict requirements to be a super nice, isn't there? Yeah, if they're super nice, Manon will ring the bell. You can upload pictures of your bike by clicking link on the description below. Um, Warning, there is some uploader issues. We are having a few uploader issues. We're going to blame John Cannings for this. Yes, but Cannings is, is... Diligent behind the scenes, he'll he'll yeah, fix it. You better do. But it does mean that this week we don't have anyone's names of the bikes that they've submitted. The malfunction will be fixed. But first up, we've got a giant revolt in a field in with a, a field. with a with a top tube bag on it in its natural habitat. Gravel bike. Say. Well, it's not gravel; it's grass. Well, UK gravel. What are you making of that? Um, very nice bike. I just don't like it up against that fence. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's when I look closely, you know, it's in, it's kind of in Biggie Smalls. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, we can let... That's a nice, isn't it? No, no bottles on that bike. Yeah, but a big top tube Yeah. I, I, I think it's a nice. I like the brown, I like the tan side doors and the brown bar tape, though. Mm, that that nice. does look good, yeah. Uh, next up, we have a Holdsworth. Oh. Ooh. I remember these uh, being used by the, the team back in the day when yeah. Holdsworth was bought by Planet X. Yeah, and they had quite a... Yeah, um, they tried to reinvigorate the brand. Um, quite a nice retro kind of jersey. Yeah, Dean Downing. Yeah. Be in that team. Uh, we have a gold chain. Um, a, a, interesting as well. Bora Ultras. Why does that fist pump me for gold chain? Oh, yeah, is this right. not a thing anymore? No, it is. I, did, I, I was not on the ball. No. I, was too, I was too busy focusing on the Bora Ultras that have got... Um, uh, tubs on them. Yeah. So and um, Tubular tyres. And we don't see many of those. No, not these days. Uh, a, we've got a, a, a very sort of excited looking stem. <laughs> Ollie! <laughs> uh, nice white bar tape, nice white saddle. Quite I like think the colour coordination. Nice that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go yeah. with that as well. Why are you first bumping again? I'm not on the ball. You've been away from the game too long, Ollie. I've been away a long time, yeah. Right. right. What have we got? Oh, Trek Madon. Oh, that definition, spicy. Yeah. It's, it looks like a Project One Trek Madon, and it's the older Trek Madon, so it's faster than the new one. And can we just talk about the co- colour coordination going on here with the, the little red detail on the bar tape, the decals on the wheels, the, um, what are they called? Yeah, the yeah. The valves. Oh, yeah. The, oh, the good ov- spot. oversized poly wheel. There's a lot of, uh, this person's favourite colour. I think is red. Oh, it could be black. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is very smart, but it's not in Biggie it's Smalls. It's not in Biggie Smalls. The wheel is cropped out of the image a little bit. That- like it's, that's the rear one. Yeah. You know, it's not like centred. It's, I, I, it's so close. It's so close to being a super nice. That's all it needed to be done but was put it in the big ring and whack it in the Smalls. With a bike that's that fancy, we, we need to really Yeah, we have to be crack, strict. Down, crack down on this. That's a nice. Nice. Um... Next up, we've got a Canyon Grizzle. Oh, Grizzly. Quite like the, um, is it not fluorescent bottle cages? Iridescent. Yeah, they're like, uh, well, no, they're sort of uh, anodized, aren't they? That's the word I was looking for. And the valves, big fan of those valves. I do really like the Grizzle. Um, I like that it's got a bit of gravel dust on it. I think that that kind of looks looks cool with a gravel bike. Um, we're not in Biggie Smalls. The we're valves not. are aligned. Oh, I think it might be a nice. I think it might be a if nice it, yeah. as well. Yeah. God, we're struggling I, this do way, like aren't the, we? I do like the way the, the saddle pack sort of matches the frame colour, though. Very yeah. neat, nice saddle pack, that one. Yeah, it is. I was going to say um, that. Right. Now, this. There's some, New Jersey Royals, two so pound maybe a bag. This is, maybe this is on the island of Jersey. It could be. Because I'm pretty sure Jersey Royals can only be grown on Jersey. Might have to Google that. Well, I think it's like champagne can only be from champagne. It's the same with New Jersey I think, Royal potatoes. I think Jersey Royal potatoes can only be from Jersey. I think. Let's, let's, let's fact check this. Wow. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fact checked it. Well done, Ollie. So this was taken so, in, so in this, Jersey. I'm. No. Uh, not New Jersey. No, I said Jersey. Oh yeah, I thought you said yeah. Is New Jersey a place? Well, yeah, it's in America, isn't it? Yeah. It's a state. I don't think it was. No. I don't think we're getting. Well, so why is it called New Jersey Royals? As in, then they're, they're not old. Is that literally all? I think that's what it means, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, they're obviously like, you're not going to sell old potatoes. Well, people clearly do. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, interesting place to prop your bike up. Yes, but, um, I like it. Um, Ollie, although, what, what bike is this? I don't know what bike this is. I, I, I saw that it's got a custom paint job on it and it doesn't what have is, a what thing. Is, what is the custom paint, is it? I don't know, it looks really cool, but I thought, oh, is that a Lapierre, right? And then I'm not entirely, I'm not sure if it is. Let me just have a look. And then I thought, is it a GT grade? Because GT, because of the seat post yeah, junction, yeah. it's very like a GT grade. But that is quite, no, quite it's not. The, the GT grade has external cables at the front. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look and see if I can track down what this is. I think it, it's really nice though. Yeah, that looks about right. I think it's a Lapierre Zelius. Yeah. 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 Is it, I want to work out what, what the stickers are. I don't know, but... Because they kind of look like flat... The pink ones look like flowers, but then the other ones look a bit like an F1 car. Upside down. I don't know. Anyway, if this is your bike, please let us know what is... What, what's on your bike. Because it's very yeah. interesting. It looks like it's got Garmin Vector power pedals on there. I, I really like it. I think this is a yeah, super Yeah, nice... I mean, we're in Biggie Smalls. The valves are aligned. Everything... I mean, it's a cool, cool backdrop. Yeah. On Jersey. Jersey Royals, I, I, they are very good potatoes. What makes, what kind of potatoes are they? Like a boiling potato? It's, it's like, a, it's like a, a special variety of sort of like new potato. So you just have like a Very boiling. nice little skin on it. A very, oh, good. Got a distinctive flavour compared to a, other small potatoes. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's it for this week's Bike Fault. If you want to send in your bike, make sure to do so by clicking in the link in the description and hopefully we can feature your bike next week. It's been a great, great show, Ollie. Um, and let us know what you thought of the most expensive and the cheapest bikes in the Tour de France. And if we missed anything, drop it in the comment section below. Mm. Um, Alex will be back from Eurobike next week and we'll be back on the show. Got anything to say? I'm just, I'm just thinking in French. <laughs> Got anything to say in French? I was thinking what Jersey Royal would be in French. Do you work it out? Well, What's Roy, potato? Royam, pomme de terre. Pomme de terre. Jersey's probably the, the same, I think. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, we'll end it there. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now.